What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Sit Down. And before we get started today, I just want to let you guys know about our special going on at the woodenspoonstore.com. You could order a custom spoon today or any one of the um, pre-printed spoons we have. And if you use code SPOONS, S-P-O-O-N-S, you'll get 15% off your order. And guys, guess what? Just because we're generous, that goes off your entire car to check out. It's a little Valentine's Day special for you guys. So use SPOONS, S-P-O-O-N-S at checkout at the woodenspoonstore.com. Get 15% off your whole order. Custom spoons for Valentine's Day. You can get the Tiamo spoon, the Tipo Benny spoon. Tell that, some, tell that special somebody you love them with a spoon from the woodenspoonstore.com. So now we can get into our episode. What's going on, everybody? Um, not much going on since the last episode. I don't want to um, go too long in this intro because we got a solid guest coming up. But um, what else is new? I got my hair cut from somebody other than my brother for the first time in three years, a Russian guy. I haven't had I haven't had somebody not Italian cut my hair. Maybe ever. So this is a big jump. I had to like just find a barber real quick. My hair is out of control. We're shooting some videos this week in New York City at some restaurants, shooting some content. I was shooting the podcast, so I had to get it done. And that dude ripped my brother apart. It was hilarious. He said, it was, uh, it was cut uneven, so I have to beat the shit on my brother now. <laughs> but now we're kidding. Uh, let's, let's just get right into the episode today. We got Carmine Yusko coming up. Um, you've seen him from these videos. I'll play him throughout the episode, but this one in particular is great. The, the slimy fuck video. Yeah. You call yourself a friend? Yeah. Yeah. You say you're a friend? Yeah. I'll never trust you again. Really? A damn my All life. Right. All right. You slimy fuck. Yeah, so you know what? Let's just bring him out and talk to him. The the guy from South Philly, we got Carmine Yusko. What's going on, guys? And I am joined by Carmine Yusko of South Philly. You've probably seen him on TikTok or the Jeff Wittick podcast, hanging out with Dobrik and them. The guy's blown up from these TikToks that we're definitely going to talk about. What's going on, Carmine? How you doing, pal? Thanks for having me on. Good. I mean, the first thing that I notice is your accent is like, perfect like just like i don't know if is it is it philly because it's like it's not as ugly as like a boston accent or like but it's like it's like classy i don't know how to explain quite honestly, i don't know how the hell i got my eyes it's not quite a south philly accent it's not quite a new york new york accent i guess you could just call it a carmine accent i just kind of kind of happened i don't know but everybody uh always asks me if i'm from new york with my accent it's funny they think i'm from brooklyn no nah, i'm from south yeah. philly right. i can't explain once he goes, you sure you're not from Brooklyn? I said, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not from Brooklyn. <laughs> I know, yeah. So, so I guess tell everybody, like, where are you from? Like, what was, what was like growing up in Philly like, and all that? Well, I'm born and raised in South Philadelphia. Um, it's growing up here is one of the best things that anybody could ask for, in my opinion. Uh, very strong Italian neighborhood, uh, Irish as well. Um, you know, within the certain areas of the neighborhood, and it's very tight knit community. You know, everybody knows everybody. Um, everybody's willing to help everybody. It's a very tight knit community. And um, the, the household that I grew up in is uh, very, very Italian. You know, that's, that's how we grew up. Um, you know, Sunday dinners, you always had a pasta course and a meat course and salad, so on and so forth. You know, Christmas time, seven fishes. And I, some of my youngest memories, um, you know, South Philly Row Homes, you're allowed to stay on the street. You're allowed to go up and down the street, but nothing else. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not. Or finally able to get off the street and go to the local playground by yourself with your friends. It was like the biggest deal in the world. You know, uh, it was just, it was very simple times. It was very nice. It was very relaxing growing up in South Philly. Yeah. Very, how, how old are you now, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 24. Okay. So you, I'm 25. So we're probably the same age. It's like, I feel like our generation, like, especially like the late 90s um, babies, we're like. I'm five very shortly. So. What was that? I tell- I tell everybody I'm 25 because I'll be 25 every show. Yeah, yeah. But like our like the late 90s kids, it's like we saw like I feel like we were like the last just generation of kids before like all the technology. So we have like some of like the older values, but still like like are in touch, like obviously with technology and everything. Like we're on like on the forefront of that too. Cause I remember I tell my sister, I said, because she's like obviously they give them computers now in school. They give them computers and iPads and shit. Yeah, it's it- from when I was young, you know, the, the amount of technological advance we've had is absolutely crazy. Yeah. I mean, I used to play with 
I, I don't even remember having an iPhone or anything like that. My first phone was uh, a Motorola Razor was my first. Oh, phone. I had a, I had a Razor too. <laughs> you remember the portable DVD players? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Nobody uses them anymore. I had a portable DVD player. I remember the PlayStation One was the first game system. I know. I PlayStation One was the shit, dude. <laughs> you know, it's how, how much stuff has changed drastically over the years. It's I know. I tell I tell my sister. I said, dude, like. It wasn't even that long ago. Like I was in high school and I got in trouble for taking my phone out in school. Like yeah. you couldn't have your phone in school. Like you're getting, you're like, you're getting like suspended. That was like a, a mortal sin. If you took your phone out of school, it was like the end of the world. I know. Uh, not- we were young, I don't know about you. We always used to go out and play, you know, yeah. you actually went outside and knock on your friend's door and ask that they could come outside. Yeah, it was my brother and I growing up in Niagara Falls. It was kind of just us. We lived in a, like an older neighborhood, but like we just go outside and just make up games. I remember yeah. my co- my cousin's going to get a, a kick out of this. It's her favorite story. It was Easter one year. I must have been eight, nine, ten around around that age. And we were playing just like baseball with a tennis ball and a gardening stick, like a stick that you put in the garden. <laughs> cut the ball in it yeah and so she threw the ball and i hit it i hit it way over the fence it went like three four houses down and it was the funniest thing in the world (laughs) i just yoked it it was just it was it's just classic it's just like those memories we have grown up and i don't know if kids are going to have these memories anymore i mean it's it's sad to say that kids prefer to stay inside and play on their video games and i i always tell uh, my girlfriend in the future you know when we have kids one day we are not going to let our kids sit there and play on a video game. I will force my my kid to go outside and actually play, you know, mm-hmm. scrape your knee a little bit, you know? Exactly. I know. Even like when we were like getting into high school and stuff and getting like going out, like we still like weren't on our phones. I mean, we we're playing video games, and stuff, but like we'd go out and get in trouble, like real trouble. Like we'd go, I remember going yeah. to play Ding Dong Ditch. Remember Ding Dong Ditch? <laughs> They were fun days. Thank Doc did it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> they were really fun. Like, you're bringing back memories over here. You know, as a kid, you get in trouble. You get a carton of eggs. You start fucking throwing eggs at cars. Oh <laughs> Good times, man. But it, it's, I don't, I think yeah, we were the last good generation to actually go out and enjoy ourselves and have fun. Yeah, 100%. I mean, instead of that, we play video games, but not to the extent that it's played today. No. no. Not at all. I know kids are getting paid millions to play video games now. I wish so. I would have known that years ago. <laughs> I know. I would have. I would have just studied the game all day. I know it's so funny though. Yeah, but um, so growing up in South Philly, and then um, when were all these like videos taken of you? Was that like high school? They were over the course of just years. You know, these were nobody knew what we were gonna do with these. They were just videos that were taken to just be taken. You know, it was something that would just happen. Friends would see something that happened, and it was all genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, and they'd, oh, I want to record this. I oh, knew what was going to happen. We didn't, we didn't know we were going to post these videos. They were just videos. You know, mm-hmm. the most like day of it. And now, well, you know, they, they ended up going somewhere. I mean, I never would have thought in a million years that I would have gotten recognized off of videos of stupid shit from when I was a kid. <laughs> i know yeah i feel like every friend's got like every friend group has like just the person that's just like he's the one on the camera the whole time and it seems like that was you i guess that's how i ended up in the entertainment business you know i guess, <laughs> I, guess uh, I grew up to become a singer and an actor so i guess that's I, it started somewhere right yeah, i guess i got absolutely. yeah so like what's the friend group like is it like the, the same kids like that you grew up with or um, so I have uh, multiple friend groups now. You know, the same kids I grew up with, of course, I'm very close with. I uh, always will be. To, to some of my best friends. But I have people that I'm closer with now than I am with the people that I grew up with then. You know, things change over time. But uh, we mainly all stayed in contact with each other. and we, we still go out and have good times. Just, you know, you meet new people. You meet new friends as well. And, you know, time moves on. But for the most part, I am very close with most of the people that... Um, I was back in the day. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So um, I got to, we got to hear some stories behind it because I talked to Alex a little bit. He gave me like a little bit, but he, we actually hung out in the, in the city one, in, um, for uh, dinner one night. We had an event in little Italy. So he, he stopped by and he was telling me a little bit of the backstory, but I, I got to hear it from you. So the most, the most viral video there was, and we'll actually play <laughs> it. 
we'll play it for everybody on the video podcast. But um, it's, it's you saying, it's you saying like you call yourself a friend. I'll never trust you again, you slimy fuck. And that's like the most iconic one, right? I can't get away from that video. That video is going to haunt me for the rest of my life now. <laughs> um, so the backstory behind that, uh, I was I was young. I was in my teens. <laughs> Full suit ball- too. Full suit. I did a show that night. I think I just started singing. Okay. And I was in a for purposes, I'm not going to say what bar I was in because mm-hmm. I wasn't supposed to be in that bar. And um, I was drinking, you know. Uh, when I was about 16, 17, I thought I was a 40-year-old man. You know, I, I always was older. I always had an old soul. But anyway, I'm drinking and I'm talking to this girl that's way too old for me. And I don't know how I'm doing it, but I'm pulling her because, you know, I'm acting older. Yeah, it's the aura. It's the suit. You had a shiny yeah. suit on, too. That was a nice suit. Dark skin, that suit. I, I still have that jacket. <laughs> And um, I get a call from a friend of mine. He says, Carm, we're going out to this party out in Jersey. you got to come with us. There's going to be a ton of women there. You're going to have a ball. I said, no, I'm drunk in a bar. I want to stay drunk in the bar. I'm talking to somebody already. They begged and begged me and begged me until finally I get to the fucking car. I got a load on. I don't want to do this already. And they drive me out to Jersey. They pull over at some park. And they say, we're here. I said, we're where? I said, oh, yeah, there's no party. We just wanted to get you out of the bar and fuck around. Oh, my God. I lost it. I started snapping. And the little guy in the video's name is Ricky Bacari. I said, don't take me to fuck home. Take me to fuck home now. Take me back to the bar where I was. Get me out of here now. And he said, no, nah, no. Nah. And that's when I said, you know what? You call yourself a fucking friend, you. You do this to me. You're fucking slimy fuck. I'll never trust you again. And he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they finally took me to the bar. After I nagged them half to death the whole night. Yeah, so did you end up seeing the girl again? No, she left. Oh, my God. So I drank myself into oblivion. <laughs> I was mad after that. I could imagine. Rightfully so. I know. It's just certain friend groups have that just like, uh, you got to mess with everybody. Oh, I was, I was very aggravated that night. Mm-hmm. And I, thought I had some booze in me, too. So it was like, uh, I wasn't happy. What, what's the drink of choice for Carmine? Then, at the time, it was Jack, Gentleman's Jack on the Rocks. And then I switched to a straight-up gin martini shaken with a lemon twist, which I'll still drink once in a while. Mm-hmm. Then it went to gin and tonic for a long time, and now I don't drink gin and tonic. And now I'm a, a very strict scotch drinker. I very rarely have a martini. I always drink scotch. That's my drink of choice. Scotch mm-hmm. Rock. Particularly uh, Glen Levitt 18. That's my drink of choice. When I, or Dewar's Rocks. When I, whenever I'm out, whether I'm at a nightclub, a bar, a restaurant, unless I have a beer, I'm having a glass, a couple of glasses of scotch. <laughs> that is, I, uh, I, I could, expect nothing less. I expect not, <laughs> like a, ask anybody you know, put out an inquiry. I could drink scotch like it, it's somebody's job. I could sit there, drink a bottle of scotch, and walk in the street running. <laughs> Scotch, like it's nobody's business. I don't know what it is. I just, I thoroughly enjoy scotch. I, I actually enjoy the taste of scotch, and just it goes down so well. I, I can't stop drinking. I know, oh my god, that's so that's funny. My dad, I, you were, I honestly, you remind me of <laughs> lighting up a cigarette. Like honestly, it's perfect when I say this. It's you're reminding me of my freaking dad right now. You know how many times I got a funny story for you. All right, let's hear it. I'm at a club. It's like a club bar, and I'm talking to this girl. She's a dynamite knockout dang really good looking cat and i'm talking to her and i think i'm going somewhere with her and i think i'm about to make out you know make it do a good thing here and you know what she says to me oh you're such a pop pop a what me a, pop-pop, a grandpa oh my god Got my head and just shook i said you know what that's it and i think i've always been called a pop pop i hate that that's the last thing you want to hear when you're trying to make it with a girl is Hey, pop up. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. I know. You gotta make sure you gotta look look out for Chris Hansen sometimes if you're gonna get called right. a pop up. How old are you? I'm not in my 40s. Don't worry. <laughs> Chris Hansen. Oh, I know that's funny. Yeah. Well, what do you smoke though? Too? You're smoking marbles or? Parliament. What? Parliament. Parliament. All right. The only man should smoke Parliament. You know, I tell, I see kids vaping and shit now. I was like, why don't you just man up and smoke a cigarette at this point? <laughs> the world didn't make too many men these days. 
<laughs> no, man. Yeah, so what do you got going on now? You smoke you... Not be either way, but if you're going to smoke something, at least have it be a cigarette. Yeah, honestly, I hate to say it, but people look cooler when they smoke a cigarette than smoking a USB cord, a USB <laughs> cable. That's how I got hooked smoking cigarette. I tried to look cool, <laughs> and I woke up one day and realized, oh, shit, I'm actually addicted to these things. <laughs> I actually need to smoke them now. <laughs> Oh my god, that's oh, it's too much. What does your mom think of this? Of what? You smoking and drinking and getting in uh, trouble. This all the time. You drink too much. You smoke too much. You stay out too late. Oh well. Sorry, mom. I'm in the entertainment. <laughs> what do you want? This is who you raised. <laughs> I'd say she raised a classy guy. I like to think she didn't do too bad. You know what I mean? I like. I think she did a good job. I mean, uh, it's not too often you get somebody who sings, uh, who's in the entertainment business and does it for a living and makes a good living off of it. You know what no, I, mean? I was going to say, you have an incredible voice too. Very much. Thank mm-hmm. you. And the sky's the limit. You know, I'm, uh, I'm going to go until I'm a superstar. Absolutely. For, absolutely. For sure. I always okay. say this too. I, ha- I actually had my mom on the podcast one time for Mother's Day, I think last year. And I said, you know what? Like for as much shit as you give us, it's like we turned out better than everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I had strict parents growing up, but I was, I was a little prick as a kid. Now that I'll, I'll give my mother that. I was not the easiest to deal with. She mm-hmm. said, no, I fucking butted heads with it. Oh, I mean, she said I couldn't go out. I snuck out. She said I couldn't do this. I did it anyway. I was a, I was always getting in trouble as a kid. Oh my god! Uh, my mother had her hands full, but and don't get me wrong, I took my fair share of ass whoopings from her. Yeah, <laughs> but I accepted it at some point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are you I'm, the oldest? What? I'm the only child. Oh, you're the only child. Yeah, I'm the only child. I have a ton of cousins, but I'm, I'm, I have a stepsister. But that's about it. Oh, okay. But I remember one time um, she told me I couldn't go out or something like that. She went to Atlantic City and I was supposed to be staying at my father's. And I used to keep the back window, which was in the kitchen, open. I would go through the alleyway, open up the back window, sneak in and throw house parties. Well, she lied to me and she didn't go to Atlantic City. I snuck in, I fucking got plopped my ass in the kitchen sink. And I walked past the kitchen and there was a motion sensor, a fucking alarm went off. Oh, my God. And I seen the bat, the upstairs light go on. I went, uh oh, <laughs> I was bad. That was a bad day. Oh my god, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. So, what does she think of the? Has she seen all the videos now? Yeah, she. So my mom, she likes it. She just uh, she goes, why do you have to curse on your podcast? Yeah. What, what is this? I go, mom, this, this is what they do today. This is how it is. You know, they they don't want to sit here and hear me talk you know, very respectfully and this and that. They, they want to hear me be genuine. And exactly. Genuine. Mouth of his, I got a sailor mouth as a genuine. Every other word out of my mouth is fuck sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be somebody. I'm not. They want the genuine me. I'm going to give them the genuine me. I, like you should. I think that's the one thing. Authenticity is definitely key, especially in all entertainment, podcasting, singing, at, like uh, anything. Uh, got to be, got to be authentic for sure. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So what? Some of the other videos. I think the under the most underrated video that was posted of you was the old guy that like smacked you in the back of the neck. <laughs> he was a nasty son of a bitch. <laughs> I didn't want to touch him. Yeah, I give out to him when he touched me. I was like, Ew, you know, what's all right? What's the backstory behind that one? And, you know, everybody always says, why didn't you hit him? Well, if I hit him and I beat him up, I beat up an old man. Yeah. If he beats me up, I got beat up by an old man. So I don't win either way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But that, I was sitting there and I'm drinking a coffee and he's just talking to me and talking to me. I said, okay, pal. And he goes, oh, fuck you. I said, oh, fuck you. And he stood up and I stood up and he pushed me and I got behind the chair because he had crummy shit all over his hands. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, he was disgusting. <laughs> Oh, thanks. I'll take the ball from that one. I don't want to catch whatever. Yeah, he's he's the slimy fuck. <laughs> was the definition of a slime. Ugh. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I need some. What was that? I said I get skeeved out thinking about it. <laughs> All right. So say I come to Philly. What's what? do I, Okay, first off, where's the best steak and cheese sub? That's a good question to ask. Bacon, you mean cheese steak? Cheese steak. That's what I meant. Bacon, cheese. Woohoo. I know. 
I love Phil's cheesesteaks. They are my favorite of all time. Phil Baldino and Joseph Baldino have the best cheesesteaks in the city, in my opinion. But um, if I was going to give you my top five, it would be Phil Steaks. John's Rose Porch makes a dynamite cheesesteak. The original Ishka Bibbles makes a dynamite cheesesteak. Avenue Steaks makes a dynamite cheesesteak. And if I'm going for the fifth one, I'm going to go with Jim's. Jim's. Jim's I've steaks. had Jim's. But Phil's is number one in my opinion. So Geno's and Pat's aren't even on the top five. You know what the good thing to get at Geno's is, honestly? They're cheese fries. Cheese fries. Geno's has the best cheese fries ever. All right. Because when I was in Philly, I, I we didn't even like I we didn't do our research beforehand. We didn't even we were told Jim's was good. We went to like just some random other places. That, and then I can't stand Pat's. They're tourist traps, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I've had I've lived here so long. I've had a Pat Steaks and a Geno Steaks, and it's just yeah. just okay. It's edible, but it's you know it's tourist food. Everyone kept telling us Max is in North Philly. Fuck Max. Yeah. They told us it created the cheesesteak here in South Philly. <laughs> they kept telling everyone kept telling us, get an Uber to Max's, tell the Uber driver to stay there, go and get your cheesesteak and get out. That's what everyone was telling us. I wouldn't even bother. Wouldn't even bother. But it's in um what is that in Creed, the movie Creed? That's Max's, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you like Creed as opposed to the other Rockies? I stopped watching after Rocky Four. There's only so many times you could tell the same story. You know what I mean? I watched Creed One. I didn't watch Creed Two. Creed Two was not as good. Creed One I thought was very good. I mean, but it's the same story. You know what I mean? The young guy's coming up, he's boxing, he goes to the fight, and he wins the fight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? How many times are you gonna tell? That's why after Rocky Two they should stop. <laughs> you know what's gonna happen? He's not gonna fucking lose. He lost in three. He didn't lose to Mr. T. In the first, he had one fight. There was two fights in that movie. The first one he lost. Yeah. And what did he do? Then he came back on. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. It's, uh, Jesus. You know, he's always going to win. I, I guess so. I guess you could so. watch movies and tell him. I'm, listen, I love Rock. Adrian, Father Carmine. In the first movie, Father Carmine. Oh. You know? <laughs> I love the movies, but there's only times you could tell the same story over and over. Yeah, this is true. This is true. So what other um I'm trying to think what other Philly things I'm missing. You guys like Eagles fans? Oh, go birds all the way. We got Bill who retired too. What was that? <laughs> Little Tom Brady. He's gone. Oh, we beat him though. Yeah. We beat him in what was it, 45? We beat him? 42? Super Bowl 45 or 42? I'm not, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't remember which one it was. I get the numbers confused. All I know is that we beat them. Yeah, that's true. Um, we're just struggling Bills fans over here. Bills, yeah. You guys, you guys got close. We got so yeah. close. Got close. I was actually, I wanted KC though. But no, not KC. Who'd you play? Cincy. Cincinnati. I, I didn't want, um, I'm sorry. You think you lost me? No, no. I didn't want uh, I didn't want the the Bills. I'm not gonna lie to you. No, come on. We're the underdog. We're the ultimate underdog. Bizarre, but I was rooting for sin. Yeah, I like yeah. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow seems funny. Yeah, Joe Burrow. Oh, you like him because he's around here. He's out smoking cigars in the locker room. Oh, <laughs> my type of guy. My kind of guy. <laughs> I know. How can you not like a guy like that? Wherein I predicted, to be honest with you, before the, the season, when the season first started, I wanted to see the, the Vegas Raiders go. I really liked the way they were playing. Yeah, they they ended up fucking uh, fumbling it in the end. I know. Well, even like the the San Francisco 49ers, that one um, interception that should have happened, and it was yeah. some good good football getting played though. This is a good football season. This really was a good football season. Now I'm excited for the Super Bowl. I know. And um, are you a big gambler? Uh, I used to gamble a lot. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a big gambler anymore. All right. Yeah, Cause that's like my um, one thing. I, I really don't drink. I don't, I don't really don't smoke, but like, I uh, love, you, I love, I love gambling. I gambling. I used to have a fun uh, 
shit ton of fun with it, but I got too into it. You know what I mean? I was, I liked it a little too much, put it that way. Yeah. Actually, for anybody listening, my, my bookie referral code is going to be in the, in, in the description. <laughs> Go gamble kids. Yeah, no, but I don't, I, I don't do like, I'm not doing like hundreds of do- or thousands of dollars in bets. I'll do like 10, 20 bucks here and there and make it interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put a little like- yeah, I'm trying to get the. I always for the Super Bowl, I'm betting the coin toss and the national anthem every year. Uh, I always bet the coin toss if I was going to do it on heads every year. Just throw it on heads. Heads, heads is risky. I love heads. Love it. <laughs> Got it. I already. I started DMing the girl who um singing the anthem, asking her what her time's going to be. Who's uh, doing it this year? Um, I had looked it up. I think her name's is it Mickey something. It is Mickey Guy Guyton Gitten. She's a, a Grammy nominated, I think, country singer. I know I'm scheduled to do the national anthem at one of the Phillies games this year. Oh, really? Coming up, yeah. You got to let me know. I I want to come to that one. Yeah, I don't even know what game I'm doing. I just know it's going to be one of the home games. That'd be fun. That's really fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, yeah. the stadium is back. Yeah, and we'll we'll pack. We'll make sure we pack it. Oh, we should man. make it Italian American night that night. Yeah, they should. <laughs> I'm gonna go in there full Sinatra style too. I'm gonna wear a Phillies Bombers jacket with dress pants and dress shoes. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Dodgers. He wore a big Dodgers bomber jacket. Oh, I love pants. it. I love it. Yeah. So are you like um? Are you like doing gigs? Like, how often are you doing gigs now? Oh my God, I, I'm so big. Well, January and February are always slow, but mm-hmm. other than I'm. I'm busy i'm really busy that's good you know, I'm doing a lot of shows you know with some with the band some without the band but for the most part some private party stuff but i'm just booked you know i'm i got a lot of work coming in i got a movie coming out uh, called not for nothing really i'm also yeah and i'm also scheduled to start another movie very shortly which i can't really talk about too much uh, so i'm i got i got my schedule full that's awesome what's the movie not for nothing then so it's a crime drama based in South Philadelphia. I'm playing uh, one of the second leads. And it's about two brothers and their gang of friends who basically start a, a mafia-style war in Philadelphia. Um, basically the new school versus the old school kind oh. of story. That yeah. sounds pretty fun. Yeah, uh, you can look it up on IMDb and uh, just type in Not For Nothing Philadelphia movie and it'll come right up on Google. And uh, you can find out all the information on there. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So what are, are you? Are, what was behind that? The, oh, there's I behind missed. the and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. So are all your gigs mainly in Philly? Or are you traveling around or? I, I travel everywhere. Philadelphia, New York, Florida. I, I'll travel anywhere. When are you coming to New York anytime soon? Uh, I got to check the schedule to be honest with you. I'm not sure. New York's been a little weird lately with uh, booking over there. Um, but if it's a casino, whether it's a casino or a club or anything like that, I definitely post all the show dates up on my social media. Yeah, well, I'm in the city now. You got to let me know when you're here. 100%. 100%. The city's a little, New York's a little bit harder to work in these days. You know what I mean? You know what? Everything is just getting canceled and postponed for all this all this bullshit. Not to get political, but it's, it's bullshit. Yeah, Sebast- I- Sebastian canceled all of his New York shows. I was supposed to go in December. He moved them to all be honest- he really has a choice. It's up, it's starting to become up to the venue now what they want to do. No, I know. I was just like pissed, and then my sister was supposed to go to a show for the Kid Leroy and next. You know how many times I'm a big Motley Crue fan, a big rock and roll fan. How many times Motley Crue canceled their tour so far? Three times. Really? Three times already. Wow. Yeah. So. They're still touring. Yeah, this is gonna. They came out of retirement. It's gonna be. John Jett and uh, the Blackhearts, um, Poison, and then Def Leppard and Motley Crue's the headline. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. I'm that's a really? fucking huge Motley Crue fan. It's one of my favorite bands. Really? I love, I love like the old 80s rock. That's what yeah. I, I grew yeah. up listening to that. One of my, one of the, my radio stations in my car, it just stays on 102.9 Classic Rock. <laughs> that's what I've, been, I've been listening to Classic Rock on the gym and Spotify. We got um, like Motley Crue. I like Kiss. Kiss is good. Kiss is good. <laughs> I love them all. Molly Crew, Kiss, Rat, Poison, ACDC. Centralia, ACDC, Metallica. You got them all. For sure. I love them all. I like, you know, 
what the hell's the name of that? The Blue Oyster Cult. Yeah, there's uh, so many bands out there. Leonard Skinner. So many. Hours. So many. I know it all be and it beats the shit out of everything today for some reason. Yeah. I usually I really don't listen to music past the nineties. To be honest with you. Really. <laughs> I can't get into it. I really can't. You're not listening to baby. Are you kidding me? Carmine's not listening to the baby. <laughs> I mean, listen, all the power to him. People enjoy his music. I don't wish bad on any musician, but that's to me, it's not music. No, it's, I'm not. I'm just breaking. I'm breaking balls. All right. <laughs> I can't get into it. I, I, I don't know why I've tried. I, tried. I know. I know. It is what it is. And people like, have tastes. Especially when you go out to a nightclub and all you hear is this rap shit. It's... Oh my god, I know it's the worst. My sister, my Ever... sister's about to turn eighteen, and she goes, "Oh, everyone's everyone that's eighteen's going out to like the eighteen and over club." And I go, "Oh my, it's awful. Like you'll have fun maybe for the first hour you're there, then it's horrible." But listen, I, I like the old school rap that I grew up with, but the rap today is just it's all the same. One beat, and they repeat the same lyrics over and over. It's not music. It's it's background music, in my opinion. I know. You know, I listen to Sugar Hill Gang every now and then. What? I call it noise. It's noise, in my opinion. No, Sugar Hill is old, old school, old school. I never heard of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's so that? Wu-Tang old school, or what was that? Like Wu Tang old school? I think maybe even older than that. Let me look it yeah. up. Okay. Rap Rapper's Delight, that song. Ah, oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Sugar Hill Gang, Rapper's Delight. Uh, all right, I get into that. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, so what's going on now? What's uh, what are you doing? Like, uh, you got Valentine's Day plans? You got shows coming up? Let everybody know. Valentine's Day, um, at Johnny's Cafe and Marky. I got, I, like I said, I got so much coming up. You just got to check my social media for a lot of that. All right. What's your social media? Let everybody know your social media. My Instagram is Carmine Yusko one. Uh, my Facebook is Carmine Yusko. And then you could just literally type my name in on Google and everything will pop up. I think we had one question come in and it was, uh, when are you going to go back into LA and hang out with Wittick and all those guys? Uh, we have some stuff in the works, you know, yeah. me and Beth, we, we talk and we, um, just know we have some good stuff in the works. We have some good stuff. Playing. What was it like going and breaking everyone's balls out there? I was a ball. It was a ball. I had a great time out there. And me and Jeff really clicked, you know, got real close out there. And um, he introduced me to so many people, you know. And uh, all I could say, I just had a, it didn't feel like I was working. I just, it felt like I just had a ball. You know yeah, what I mean? Good. I, time. I hope my phone's on. I'm on. I just had a, I had a really good time out there. Uh, it's, I like the West Coast, but I'm an East Coast boy at heart. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I've never uh, been out to the West Coast. It's just like. It's fun to work out there. Uh, it's fun to vacation out there. Mm-hmm. But by, by the end of the week, I was like, all right. Ready I'm ready. Right what about Florida? You a Florida guy? I love Florida. I'm going to Florida for my birthday again. Oh, nice. When's your birthday? July 15th. All right, nice. Me, my girl, and my friend and his girl, we're going to go. Uh, we're staying at the Fountain Blue for five days. It's exciting. Yeah. And we're just, we're going to have a ball. You know, hopefully try to try to get a little gig out there while I'm uh, out there on vacation. I might mm-hmm. as well get some work in too. You know what I mean? No, I know. That's all the traveling we did all summer. We're like, all right, we're going to Boston, going to the North End, which have you, have you ever been in the North End? I'm actually going to be in Boston the week before my birthday. Me and my girlfriend have a wedding to go to out there at Cape Cod. Oh, and, so it's a little farther away from the north end. Well, we're, we're going to hit the north end. We're going to go there a couple days before. I was going to say gonna, the north yeah. end is the most Italian neighborhood in the states. I, I mean, I still I still have to come to South Philly. I've never been to South Philly yet, so got to get that way out of here. But, but um, we're going to. What was that? We're going to hit the north end a couple days before that wedding. Yeah, it's awesome. I'll connect you with some guys in the north end, some good restaurants and everything too. Shout out to um Christian and. Rabius in uh in the north end those guys are the best yeah, yeah. you know one of my the best italian a couple of the best italian restaurants here dante luigi's ralph's villa de roma ralph's is one of the oldest restaurants in the city um but villa de roma is really good the bocce club really good you know there's so many great italian restaurants here in the city noir is really good mm-hmm. um one of my favorite at uh, poppy's restaurant 
is really good in South Philly. But uh, one of my favorite Italian restaurants here that I used to go to religiously actually closed during COVID, unfortunately, oh. called, called La Veranda. And I used to go there every weekend. Oh. I love the restaurant so much. But that was, in my opinion, that was the best. Oh, man, it's a shame. I hate, I hate to hear stuff like that. Oh, then during the springtime, the summer, you could sit out on the water and eat, you know. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Man, I got to get down to, I got to get down to Philly. Yeah, you got to come down. I'll show you around. I have no problem showing you around. All right, yeah, awesome. And then you got your, one of your, when's your podcast coming up? Because you guys got the Chindan podcast. We are going to start that again very shortly. Like I said, we're just ironing out some details about what exact audience we want to hit. Yep. And we want to make sure that when we start back up again, we start in a way that we, we hold our audience and that we have a theme. Yep, smart. Awesome. Still episodes up there from our first season. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys had episodes of the, I saw Do the Dolly Broadway episode. That was yeah. funny. We had uh, actor Rosario Amico, who just started a, just was starring in a um, TV show on NTV called A Good Cop. Really good show if you ever get the chance to go and watch it. No, yeah, check it out. And me and Rosario actually worked on a, a short film together for Alex. That'll be coming out shortly as well. Awesome. So cool. So cool. Well, um, everybody's listening. Got to go follow Carmine. Go watch those old videos too. We're gonna I'll post them up um, when this episode drops too all over social media. So what was that? When's this drop? Um actually probably Friday. Oh cool. Yeah, I'll get I'll it up in. soon. All right. <laughs> I'll so send you the links and everything. We'll have a little watch party. All right, yeah. Yeah, that'll be nice. I watch it from the hot tub with a cigar in my mouth. I guess. <laughs> all right, we'll hop on live when that happens then. That'll be great. Awesome. Man. Well, I appreciate you doing this. Everyone definitely go follow Carmine. Go check out all the links. We'll, we'll post, post them all in the description. Thank you very much for yeah, having me. It was a pleasure. I'll, pleasure. I'll, come out, I'll come out to Philly soon. I'll, take, I'll come visit. That sounds great. Take it easy. Awesome, man. Well, everybody else listening, thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Ciao. Bye-bye.